getting away with this! This is one of the best looking mascot horror games till now with what seems to be one of the best stories. Having a kid transform into a literal guitar, traversing in a horrifying world, facing monstrous beings in the shape of mechanical instruments and musical tools. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator, and welcome to Don't Fret The Audition, which is a new mascot horror game, but this one seems to be very promising. So without much further ado, let's get right into it folks. Let's not chit chat here. There's a new mascot psychological horror game making rounds to YouTube and it seems very promising and original, unlike so many other mascot games. Our protagonist, Fred, is a boy being the victim of a fallen and abusive relationship. The father pulls up to the house where the mother, Mara, is cowering, trying to protect her son, Fred. The man not having control over his temper, being totally unhinged, tries to open the door but the lock seems to have been changed. This is a clear indication that Mara, the mother, changed the locks as it doesn't seem to be the first time the father is acting violent and dangerous. Mara tells Fred to run upstairs and hide when Fred travels into a surreal world filled with imagination and music, something that he is fond of. That is following the man finding an extinguisher and trying to break into the house. <laughs> Did you change the locks on me? You've got to be kidding me. Where's the boy? Mara, go get me, Fred. You're not getting away with this! Fred wakes up as a guitar in an imaginary world standing up from inside a guitar case. Through a letter, we learn that this world acts as a more colorful and imaginary parallel to the real world, where the children see a beautiful and magical world through music. Fred seems to be a student of a musical boarding school, with the letter mentioning how they recently purchased a conductor machine, which would help the kids with practicing their instruments. Turning the machine on, the robot inside it instantly remembers Fred and knows who he is. Being a guitar seems to indicate Fred's favorite instrument was a guitar, hence why he transformed into one in this world. This world might also be an escape for Fred from reality of having an abusive, violent father, but we'll get back to this idea later. that it's here. You may call me the conductor. My sworn duty is to look after the students of Harmonic Heights, but now my sole purpose is to orchestrate your escape. I don't have much runtime, so let me cut to the chase. The puppet masters pulling the strings have locked you, their star pupil, inside of the school. They're after your talent, Fred, and will do whatever it takes to seize it. You'll see what I mean soon enough. Speaking of strings, you appear to be missing a few. Here's something to help you tune back up. Unfortunately, a card is the best I can do in my current state, so you'll have to find somewhere to exchange it for the real deal. Fred, the only escape from this treachery comes in the form of talent canisters. Locate them in the school and bring them to me, do you understand? And do hurry. I'll miss you. <laughs> There seems to be an antagonist known as the Puppet Master trying to steal Fred's musical skills. The conductor seems to be wanting to help Fred escape. But before that, he needs to collect some missing strings and tune himself, which in this world is quite literal, as Fred as a guitar. But of course, this all might be metaphorical and a representation on how Fred feels in the real world. The school Fred is enrolled in is called Harmonic Heights, which is currently under investigation after a number of kids went missing. The school is renowned for creating some of the brilliant and talented musicians, but the missing kids cases seem to be piling up, tarnishing its once impeccable name. There seems to be some foul play in the school, with the disappearances not being simple coincidence, as we learn through a letter. You're a monster. You let her know too much, and now she's missing because of you. God, I can't even look in the mirror. My own reflection disgusts me. It all started with a simple kindness and escalated into Rachel's disappearance. Now, I have one more chance. 
one opportunity to redeem myself. It all depends on Fred. This time, I must stay in the shadows. This clearly suggests someone in the school, maybe a tutor, wanted to show some kindness to a student called Rachel, which meant exposing some sinister secrets of the school, which resulted in her disappearance. It's not very clear what Fred's involvement in all of this is, but it might be that Fred is one of the most talented and reputable students whom this unnamed person wants to leverage off of to cover his shortcomings. Moving forward, Fred overhears someone's conversation through a wall. Walkie-talkie. The person on the other side of the walkie-talkie seems to be called Dr. Reed, whom the person present calls Governor, which is another word for bus. This person on the other hand is called Jay, which might be the same person addressed in the letter read in the beginning about the conductor machine. Jay, Jay, are you there? Jay, I need to speak with you. Mm, yeah, I'm here, Governor, doing my rounds. What can I do for you? Looking through the security footage from tonight, and I've got bad news. He's here. That's impossible. The students have been sent to their rooms. You know I'm the only one with an access card to even get into the school at this hour. Jay, trust me. He's here. Fred is inside the school. Not to make matters worse, but she's here as well. I've been hearing the walls rattle all night. <sighs> I haven't heard her for months. It's way too early for this. You sure? I'm afraid so. Find him and bring him to my office. Now! They talk about a mysterious girl who might be Rachel and they are aware of Fred being in the school, which they are on the lookout to capture. So is this world actually real or a complete fabrication for an escape? Is this the place the missing kids go to? Is this a place that is created by the school? Also, who might be the puppet master? Could it be Dr. Reed? Fred being vigilant gets on his way when he finds his own journals. The journal explains how Fred has a sister called Serena and his sister went to Harmonic Heights just like him. His connection to Rachel is also unveiled, explaining that they became project buddies, with Rachel being a talented violinist. While walking through this magical place, he hears the voices exchanged between Mara and the man who is looking for him that broke into their house. Don't take another step! Fred's not here! I sent him away! Oh, you did, did you? Where would you even send him in this town? I told you, he's not here! I don't believe you. I know he's here. You're a monster. Could it be that Mara could actually send Fred to this place, which acts as a different dimension, or is it all a figment of Fred's imagination to protect himself? Fred soon finds a letter which is a description of the Harmonic Heights school. Founded on September 4th, 1990 by Dr. Sharon Reed. This is a prestigious boarding school dedicated to nurturing students, unique gifts, in a supportive environment. Here, your musical advancements will be showcased to some of the top talents in the world. Moving on, Fred notices how badly run down the school has become, acting shocked as if he hasn't been to the school for a long time. It's like the school's been running away for years. Thank Fred, you have to get home. His mature voice in a way showcases how he might not be a young kid anymore, but more like a teenager, which means that he might have been enrolled in Harmonic Heights several years ago. That's when he comes across the missing posters of Rachel, where we see a disturbing twirly distorted face with a shrine dedicated to her. Next to Rachel McFadden, there are several other posters of other missing kids, displaying how the school is notorious for kids going missing. And according to a letter we found earlier, it seems as if the school is running some secretive operations, which in events of any secrets being exposed, it is costly meaning the disappearance of the kids. Finding a note, the writer talks about certain entities that crawl through the vents and can be violent. The writer is afraid of turning into one of them, which might suggest that these terrifying entities were once human, and they seem to somehow become statues in presence of light. 
and move only in the darkness. We saw one of them earlier going through a vent. Fred finally comes across a mirror, learning in shock that he has transformed into a guitar, having two strings only, which all now makes sense to what the conductor means by saying that he is missing a few strings and that he needs to be in tune. Maybe the author of the previous letter who said that he had turned into a monster also quite literally talked about how he transformed into a monster, maybe into an instrument like Fret or one of the creatures that travel through the vents. But that would be unlikely because these creatures seem to be non-verbal and a little bit brain dead. Through more journals, we learn Rachel seemed to know about certain sinister activities taking place in the school, whom Fret didn't believe when she wanted to tell him. Fred soon comes across a telephone for students use only, finding his own missing person post there, which is weirdly of his guitar form, unlike the other students who actually had their human form. Calling the number on the post there, it reaches the Serenity Station PD with the Detective Cadence Walker's voicemail. Hello, you've reached Detective Cadence Walker at Serenity Station PD. I'm currently away from my desk at this time. If you're calling with any hotline tips about the whereabouts of any of the Harmonic Heights students, please leave a message. And a reminder to the public, twice during the year we see an uptick in these missing children cases, and there have been reports of callers citing men in animal masks throughout the evenings, which seem to have a connection with the timelines of missing students. So if you have been unfortunate enough to see one of these men, please dial for emergency immediately. God help us all. Moving on, Fred reaches an empty classroom with a lady sitting behind the desk, having a hole on her face. Reading another journal, we learn that this teacher is appropriately called Miss Hole, but here with a W, who has been most recently acting strange, having a constant daze as if not being there mentally anymore. All of a sudden, the teacher bangs her head on the table and seemingly dies. Picking up a specific sort of light, the TV instructs Fred that it is used against the beings which were written about, who are violent. These violent creatures don't move in presence of light, so it is very important and crucial to use these lights for defense. These beings are very horrifying, being humanoid but having empty faces, formed with what seems to be paper, having a single expression only. They are fast and violent and seem to kill in absence of light. More journals reveal that Rachel had an issue with Miss Hole, not wanting to recite or practice anymore, and then eventually talking to the janitor, who also seems to be a major character. Maybe it could be even Jay, someone that was speaking to Dr. Reed. Playing a frequency on the radio, it reports how at least a dozen kids have gone missing with no leads in the local town of Meadowbrook, while the most recent missing case being a 12-year-old called Cooper Allen. The father testified that he saw his son abducted by a white van which sped off into the darkness, never to be seen again. Cooper Allen, a 12-year-old boy, has been abducted from his suburban home in the middle of the night. In an interview with Channel 12 News, the boy's father claims to have heard a car crash just down the street from their home. What is going on? Is the school responsible for the disappearances or is it a white van which is doing it? What happens to the missing children? Do they turn into instruments or the dull, sensitive to light, violent creatures with an expressionless face? It is ironic how these entities are expressionless in a school for music where expression is vital. Fred gets attacked by one of these monsters who are very fast and powerful, narrowly managing to escape and going to the conductor. The conductor explains that Fred needs to find the missing talent canisters and then head to the lobby doors. But for now, he needs to worry about a horrifying and deadly antagonist known as the tape head. The school transforms into a nightmare, with tape head suddenly appearing, being an enormous feminine character, which ends the story here. Could this possibly be 
Dr. Reed. Keep in mind, at this point, this is just a demo, with the full release expanding a lot more on the story. So far, it seems as if the entire school and its magical world is a representation of the real life and its ugliness the violence, the hatred and abuse, Miss Hall representing emptiness and void, maybe depression and trauma, the violent critters representing how constant pressure and demand for perfection made the students into these violent beings, just being empty doll husks, the missing kids being abducted by the white van and sinister and dirty secrets that this boarding school is hiding. There are many more characters to look forward to, such as Tapehead, Jay, Dr. Reed, the janitor, and many more. And that is it for this video folks, I truly hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. As always, it's been your host Star, and I will catch you on the next one. Have a fantastic day. <laughs>